This tunnel vision, paired with an intrinsically slow rate of fire, generally makes the weapon ill-suited for close quarters battle. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so we're checking out another video from Ahoy. Now, I'm really excited to check this one out because this is about the Arctic Warfare sniper rifle. Now, I know a little bit about this, and I imagine they're gonna talk about some of it in this video, but I know the company was started by like two dudes in a garage, and I think at some point, the government was trying to get a contract with them, and they went by their facility, and they made this like whole makeshift warehouse or something to try and make it look like it was a bigger operation than what it was. So I'm excited to check this one out. It's a cool sniper rifle, and yeah, Ahoy does some really cool stuff. Now, before we get into that, we have a new supporter of the channel, and that is ExpressVPN. So I've been using ExpressVPN for a couple of years now. And if you guys don't know what a VPN is, basically it creates like a wall of anonymity between yourself and whatever website you're trying to connect to. And at the same time, it also encrypts the traffic end to end. So basically if you connect to a website, it'll just see that you're being connected from an ExpressVPN server, whichever one you connect to, and not your unique computer address wherever you are in the world. So if you're trying to put less data out there, then it's very, very helpful. Now, at the same time, they have servers in 94 different countries. So if you're trying to get access to content from like another country, so for me, when I was in South Korea, I was trying to get access to US Netflix shows because that's what I was used to. So all I had to do was turn on ExpressVPN, connect to one of their US servers, and that was pretty much it. Super, super easy. So if you guys wanna check out ExpressVPN, I'll put a link in the video description. And at the same time, if you use that URL, when you get a 12 month subscription, you can get three months free. So definitely recommend checking it out. It's a very, very good tool, especially if you're just trying to reduce your online footprint. But yeah, let's check out this video. It should be a good one. Hi. A good sniper is terrifying. Facts. Hidden death that lurks in a hillside. Unseen and able to precisely quench targets with a single bullet. If you're lucky, such a threat will only send a chill down your spine. And if you're not, well, <laughs> you might never hear the shot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, I love these the videos. The Arctic Warfare series of rifles are purpose-built for precision. It has found fame through its confirmed kill distance records mm. and in its depiction in games. Yes. Most notably as Counter-Strike's Orb. Yeah, so I kind of wonder how the Arctic Warfare got its acclaim like worldwide, because you see it in a bunch of different video games. I mean, with video games, they tend to just find guns that look cool and put them in there. Like the L96 definitely looks unique. So when I was getting into Airsoft, I actually got an L96, but it's got like this cool thumb hole and it's really blocky in the front. It just looks really unique and it looks really cool. If I can find a picture of me with that rifle, I'll put it up, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. But yeah, it was just, it was a cool rifle. So maybe that's why they put it in video games. So what place do precision weapons have in games? What makes sniper rifles such a desirable choice for some players? That one shot kill. And what is it about bolt actions that makes them deal more damage? <laughs> video games, the really. Warfare story starts in England in 1978. Hell yeah, let's do it. At this time, the British Army were reliant on the 19th century Lee Enfield rifles for their marksman roles. Damn, Designated still? the L42A1. Hmm. While there's nothing wrong with a classic bolt action, there was definitely room for a more modern, specialized long-range weapon. Yeah, no kidding. Accuracy International was hey, founded by go. a group of skilled competitive shooters looking okay. to design and build a new tactical rifle. Their first is so all the stories you hear about like sniper rifles getting modernized is really like fascinating because I know on the US side, snipers in Vietnam were just getting hunting rifles because they were tired of using the traditional rifles that they were giving in the military. So they were using hunting rifles. You hear other people using hunter rifles all the time. Some people would put a scope. I know Carlos Hathcock did this. He put a scope on a 50 caliber machine gun and was using that because it had like more range and, and whatnot and more knockdown power. So it's pretty crazy all the ingenuity you hear about sniper rifles. So it was definitely important to a lot of people. Don was the Precision Marksman, or the PM, in 1982. Okay. It was designed in response to the British Army's search for a new sniper rifle and would emerge triumphant in competition. Hmm earning the L96A1 designation. There it is. Built for precision from the ground up, the platform is bedded on a solid aluminium chassis, surrounded by a distinctive drab green hollow polymer stock. <laughs> yep. Not content with a single contract, AI shot for the Swedish military, huh. who were in a similar position to the Brits, seeking to replace their World War II era rifles. Hmm. 
The precision marksman design was modified to cope with extremely cold temperatures. Oh, I didn't know with this. With a milled bolt that minimized the surface area able to freeze together, and a larger <laughs> trigger guard to allow the use of heavy gloves. Okay, that makes sense. These changes gave the updated rifle a new name. The Arctic Warfare. Oh, snap. It was accepted into that. service by the Swedes in 1991 as the PSG-90. I was thinking that I know Accuracy International is the company that makes the Arctic Warfare and the L96 and whatnot, but I thought the Arctic Warfare was just like a series of rifles and the L96 fell under that, but now it makes a lot more sense as to why it's actually called the Arctic Warfare. Because I was like, why does Accuracy International, a British company, have a rifle that's called the Arctic Warfare? So that makes a lot of sense. So that's pretty cool. And the British Army adopted the improved version as the L118A1. Okay. Later variants of the Arctic Warfare include the AWF with folding stock. Oh, and yeah. The nice. AWP or AWP, intended for law enforcement use with plain black furniture. Okay. Hmm. The AWS is a suppressed version with an integral suppressor. And similar is the AW Covert, which comes with a shortened barrel and folding stock. Nice. I like it. The AW Magnum expanded the caliber offerings to a higher power band with chamberings in 300 Win Mag nice. and 338 Lepua Magnum. 300 Win Mag is deadly, These man. rounds deliver more kinetic energy on target, extending the rifle's reach and flattening the bullet's trajectory. Hmm. This makes the Magnum offerings particularly suitable for extreme ranges. And yep. the AWM was adopted by the British Armed Forces under the L115 designation. Okay, hmm. It was this variant that would catapult the Arctic warfare into the record books, as the AWM is responsible for the longest ever confirmed mm. sniper kill. Okay, that'll do it. At 2,475 meters. Okay, I'm not sure. I don't think that that is still the record today, especially considering this video is probably a few years old now. Yeah, these records get beat all the time. I know like a Canadian got it at one point with like a Macmillan TAC-50. Uh, that was when I was a kid, so that was probably a pretty old record. But yeah, these things get broken all the time, which is pretty crazy. I don't know if it's like luck with these. Of course, you need like a rifle that can actually push that far, but those shots are pretty insane. The shot took place in 2009 during the war in Afghanistan, mm. fired by British sniper Craig Harrison, Corporal of Horse in the Blues and Royals Royal Horse Guards. I remember hearing about that. An incredible feat that placed the platform amongst the finest long range rifles. No doubt, the Arctic Warfare is every inch a marksman's weapon. Hell yeah. <laughs> the video games. It was never meant to be cheap, <laughs> nor intended for mass production. These rifles are specialist weapons for a specialized role. Yeah, they're expensive. Perhaps <laughs> it's this boutique appeal that has led to the familiar green thumbhole stock cropping up in a number of video games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such weapons have always had a tough transition into interactive entertainment. Truly realistic sniping is a test of patience and precision. <laughs> the ACOG got unseen bolt and far action. from the fray. I love it. Games normally take some liberties for the sake of balance. And mm. so, virtual sniping usually takes place at closer ranges <laughs> and at a faster pace than reality. 360 no-scopes now. Some titles do pride themselves on wide open maps. The Battlefield franchise, for instance. But most FPS insist on cramming you and your rifle <laughs> into a small arena surrounded by automatic weapons. Yeah, it's brutal. It's hard. They are still top of the tree when it comes to range damage and precision. So while you might not have a spotter at your side, you can still vex the opposition from across the map. Yeah, whenever I try using sniper rifles in video games, I always just end up giving up. Like I'll just end up switching to my secondary, which is usually like a pistol or like an SMG. And I just end up running around using that because I just don't have the patience. Unless you're playing like Battlefield where it's like really long distances and you can kind of just be a little bit more successful. Even still, it just gets kind of boring. When you're playing a video game, you want all the action. So it is kind of a hard place to put these sorts of rifles. There's a curious trait shared by all bolt action weapons in games. They all seem to do more damage than their <laughs> semi-automatic counterparts. Yeah, exactly. Even if they're of the same caliber. Uh-huh. Counter-Strike's AWP is top dog in terms of damage, and is the only weapon to kill an opponent in a single hit at any distance, anywhere above the legs, armored or not. Okay. It's this depiction that cemented the Arctic Warfare's iconic status. <laughs> the Counter-Strike AWP is a legendary weapon. My gosh. And certainly amongst the most recognizable weapons of first-person shooters. Hmm. 
This popularity in Counter-Strike has led to its appearance in other titles. Team Fortress, okay. But no matter the game, the rifle is always amongst the most deadly on offer. This yeah, is it's funny. true within the Call of Duty series. That is funny how bolt action rifles tend to be a little bit more powerful. And I was like, whenever I actually, oh, he's got the Ahoy thing on his rifle. Whenever I finally learned about like how ballistics work and calibers and whatnot, I was like, why does it make sense for these bolt action rifles to be more powerful? Of course, they're going to be more precise and more accurate, generally speaking, but like, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Rifles appearing as the L96 in Black Ops the L-118A in Modern Warfare 3, <laughs> and the L-115 in Call of Duty Ghosts. So, why is the rifle always so powerful? It's not for the sake of realism, but instead <laughs> a question of balance. Yeah, sure. While you can empty a semi-automatic weapons magazine within a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. a bolt-action weapon must be manually cycled for every shot. Well, did his head just, like, spark when he got shot? First of all, these games are really interesting to see. These these videos always bring out some games that I've never even seen before. A bolt action weapon yeah, must be manually cycled for every the shot. Heck? Which means <laughs> a drastically slower rate of fire. The high damage of such weapons is necessary to keep them relevant then. Yeah, true. And as a side effect, this places a much stronger emphasis on first shot precision. <laughs> yeah, it's Luckily, not satisfying to shoot either. The Arctic warfare, not for me. As a scope by default. <laughs> a highly magnified view proves a double-edged sword, however, and can help to further reinforce the intended long-range role of the what weapon. What is this game? Interesting. Often, your peripheral vision will be blocked out entirely while aiming. And while some games, such mm, as Call of Duty nice. Ghosts, offer a dual-rendered view, you will still suffer in the reactivity stakes. A closer view helps when tackling distant targets, but a narrower <laughs> field of vision can blind you to closer threats. It is fun. It makes the game a little bit more challenging whenever you have guns like this. Because obviously, once you miss that first shot, you're probably just going to get lit up like with this dude. So, yeah, it is fun to use those in video games and challenge yourself. But for me, it's just it's boring, especially for like games like Call of Duty. It's really built for just like the action and trying to be super quick. So it's not as satisfying as it would be in other games like you know, Battlefield and what have you. But it is funny to see how guns sort of earn their spot in video games. I'm sure initially it's going to be just on looks and legacy as far as if they appeared in movies and whatnot. Because like with P90, that was in like Stargate. The Desert Eagle was in a lot of different movies. Even like other guns, like the, the PPK is pretty famous from from James Bond. So it is kind of funny to see how these, these guns sort of work their way around all these different areas of media and what have you. And readjusting your sights to an unexpected angle can take critical time. <laughs> this tunnel vision, a with an intrinsically eye. slow rate of fire, generally makes the weapon ill-suited for close quarters battle. But of course, <laughs> no kidding. there are still some who'll try. <laughs> the 360 no scopes. The Arctic Warfare series might be known by many names, <laughs> but there's no mistaking its uncompromised performance. It demands first shot precision and severely punishes wayward shots. Hmm. But if you want to freeze out the opposition, this rifle is ice cold. Nice. A refined weapon of precision that is deadly in every incarnation. Its power compels a cult-like following. <laughs> those who live for the thrill of a one-shot kill. It's like Desert Eagle. It's seldom the easy option. Its potency reined in with slow output and exacting function. Nice. The Arctic Warfare, record holder, purpose built, powerhouse. His words are about as concise as that rifle. Thank you very much man. for watching. But I'm kind of surprised he didn't go in depth into that that one story that everybody hears. I, I'm not sure if it is true, but I've heard it a few times. Where again, when they were trying to get the contract with the military, when they were producing these rifles, they rented out like a big warehouse space. And then when they were coming to do the inspection, they're walking around and they're like, yeah, we just, we're coming to check just to make sure this wasn't like a two man operation, which I guess is exactly what it was at that point. And they're trying to make it look bigger. So that's just a, that's a traditional story I always hear about the Accuracy International and this particular rifle. So I'm not sure if that's true. Of course, if you guys have anything to add, if you know if that's true or not, please put it down below because it is a pretty funny story. But I think this definitely has a better lineage than a lot of other firearms because again, you just have these people who are passionate about shooting and competition shooting and what have you, and they develop their own rifle. 
and the military sees that this rifle is much better than what they have, so they try and get it, which is kind of funny. It's a lot better than like the Desert Eagle that just shoots big bullets and is a semi-automatic handgun, you know what I mean? But yeah, cool video. Again, Ahoy never disappoints. I will put the original video in the description so you guys can check it out. But yeah, this channel does some really, really cool stuff as far as like different firearms and whatnot. So I've checked out most of the gun videos from Ahoy. I think there's a few more I need to check out. So I'll probably end up doing that in the future. But yeah, of course, let me know what you guys think. If you have anything else to recommend, please put it down below. But thank you guys for watching. That is it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.